Hey, Terry here, D Lab. I got some more information to boggle your mind on the NC173 receiver. This is part two. It's operating, but before I go any further, I want to do some testing to make sure it's worth the efforts. Here we go. Part one of the NC173 video, we replaced the main power transformer. That thing's holding up great. It's running cool as a cucumber. Before I go any further with the repairs on this receiver, I want to make sure that each band is receiving, right? Because if I got like a blown RF coil or something horrible, I can't put more time into a receiver that's maybe worth 200 bucks, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through each band. This is broadcast. And then we'll work our way through and make sure that all the bands are receiving. So broadcast is a gimme. Because there's always strong stations somewhere on the broadcast band. Like that one. So look at there. Full scale. So broadcast is good. Let's go to band D, which is 80 meters. That should be approximately, let's go to 3 megahertz. All right. So the reason I know that's 3 is because if you look at the manual, you put your band spread at set, and that's approximately where we're at. I cannot guarantee the calibration, but I have an RF generator here. I'm going to inject on those frequencies. Okay? So there's three. Let's see if we can find it. There he is. Yep. So that band is working. Let's go to the next band. That should be 40 meters. I don't really need to touch this dial. We'll just go straight up. It should be 8.5 megahertz. Crank up the old generator. There he is. Peek it. Good healthy signal. Let's go to the next band. It's 10 to 20 megahertz. So it should be somewhere around 22 to 23. Zing up there. Whoops. Can't do that, can I? Because I didn't flip the switch. Okay, here we go. I hear it. There it is. See it? So that's working great too. Next band. This is six meter band. If we got six meters, I'll be shocked. All right. Now, if I remember correctly, you got to flip this guy all the way over here to see the six. Then you just use band spread. Okay. So there, 51 megahertz. See if we can find it. Give her a little more output. All right, whatever. So it appears as though six meters is either not working or my generator is not working. All right. But the primary bands that we're interested in all seem to be working great. I don't really care about the calibration right now because there's other work that needs to be done to the receiver before we even attempt to align the RF. There it is again, guys. Joe Jackson, fool. Every clip's gonna have it till you buy it. All right, so here's the bottom side of the 173 receiver. You can see that somebody has gotten in here and replaced all the caps, which is a great thing, okay? You need to do that on all of these vintage receivers. However, they replaced all the caps, but they did not get in here and replace all those original resistors. And I guarantee you that most of those are way out of tolerance, right? So we need to go in here and check all the resistoroids, make sure that they're within their tolerance. Now these are all 10 percenters. The best thing to do obviously is carve them all out and replace them. But for this video, I'm just going to verify them, we'll replace the ones that are major violators and see if we have an improvement on the receive of the NC-173. It's time for the Mr. Bill story. Hold on a second. So I get this call the other day. We're just gonna call this guy Bill, right? So I pick up the phone, he's like, Terry, it's Bill. 
coming over to get my radio tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I'm like, dude, I don't even get home till like 4.30. It's really important. I've rented a car. I'm going to be there tomorrow, 3 o'clock. I'm like, all right, dude. So I took extra time off work that I don't get paid for to make sure I was here on time. So I'm waiting around. Boom. Terry, it's Bill coming down your road. Do you see me? I'm looking out. It's like, no, Bill, I don't see you. Terry, it's Bill. I, I, I'm on your doorstep. I'm knocking on the door. Why don't you answer? I'm like, dude, you're not here, Bill, right? He's like, Terry, it's Bill. Is your house green? I was like, dude, you know where my house is at. You dropped the radio off here. Guess what? No Bill. No radio. I'm out. All right, it's resistor sweep time on the NC-173. Yep, still listen to the Joe Jackson CD. Got my Beckman 360. So what we're going to do is zing through the chassis and just check these resistors. A lot of these are the original 10 percenters. So I'll tell you what I'm checking because you obviously can't see them. So the first one up here is a 270K. What do we got? 339k. All right, over here we have a 47k. What do we got? 78k. Excellente. Up here we have a 2.2k. What do we got? Hey, that one almost looks good. Let me see. Get my meter. Oh, look at there, right on the money. That's good. Here we have a 470k. See what he looks like. Ooh, 735K. So you get the point. A lot of these resistors are way out of tolerance, okay? So I'm gonna have to go through and change them. So pretty much, guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm changing all of them, okay? Let's go down and take a look at the power supply area, see if we have the same scenario. All right, so down here, looks like we've got a 2.2K sitting over here so go to the 20k scale see what he looks like now these are right in the power supply remember I just repaired that and put in a new cap oh 3.3k behind it is another 47k so we'll go up here at 200k what do we got oh yeah 86k Excellent, this is really doing great, huh? So here is a 270 ohm, so we'll go down here to 2K. What's he look like? Oh yeah, 315 ohms. So I think you guys kind of get what's going on here. Every resistor in this thing is out of tolerance. So you have to go through and replace all the resistors as well as all these caps if you want to bring this radio back up to the state of performance that you're hoping for, right? You can't just throw in caps and say, well, the resistors are close enough because they're not, okay? So we got to change them. I've gathered up some resistors, so here we go. I'm pretty much going to start from the upper left, work my way across, down. We're going to change out all these 10% resistors, put in 5 percenters, verify the tubes, We'll be able to fire it back up and give her a performance test. So the resistor replacement process is very tedious, especially if you're going to come in here and remove the leads from the components and wire in the new resistor. Okay. So this process takes a while, but you got to be very careful when you get down on these tube sockets, for example. If you put too much pressure on these guys, they're kind of brittle and they can break. And then you're hosed. So a lot of times I recommend that you cut the lead, put a J-hook in, and just hook in your new resistor to save the stress on the tube pins. All right, so there's our first new resistor in place. This was the 270K. It was up around, uh, I don't know, 330K, something like that. So this is a nice new 5% metal film type. Last the life of this radio. What's nice too is having this chassis 
removed from the cabinet it gives you better access to a lot of these parts that are kind of hidden up in these little cavities. Alright moving along on the upper cavity changed out all those resistors and add it for about an hour it's not too bad of a job now I need to swing up here there's some against the wall of the radio a lot of them are 2.2 K's and they're famous for going bad in these radios I had a minor mishap I was unwiring this terminal board and this lug broke it's part of the game time to put in a new one all right so that's a wrap on one side of the radio all the new resistors are installed now we move up to this side there's not as many resistors but I do see one it could be a bit challenging he's hiding under there it's a 470k resistor and he looks pretty sweaty so that one's gonna be a lot of fun well here's that 470k from another angle you can see a little dripper on him right there it's been hot I'm sure it's way out of tolerance either way I got to get it out of there all right mission complete I've changed out all the resistors in the NC 173 including the ones in the power supply so there are no old 20% and 10% carbons left we're all at 5% all right we're looking good now I'm going to give this thing a thorough inspection Look for any little lead trimmings or solder globs that may have fallen where they shouldn't and cause more problems. Then we'll power it up. Well, it looks like I violated one of my own rules for initially checking out a vintage shortwave receiver. Let me show you what I did. So I got all excited about putting in that power transformer because I wanted to see this guy come to life. And then, of course, we had the sensitivity issue on that one band. So I thought, hey, we'll change out all those out of tolerance resistors, right? Then I thought, you know what? I had that one band that was lacking sensitivity, but I didn't check the antenna terminal to ground for each band. And what that does is that verifies these RF input coils, right? So here's what we're going to do. I've got it set right now on band A. And you can see we got about one ohm. Now if I move the selector switch slowly, you will see this resistance change. Okay, so there's band B. So there's A and B. You can see we still have about an ohm. Here's band C. Uh-oh, she's open. Here's D and E. Back to C. Open not good so guess what we've got an open coil so if you get in here you can actually see your band select switch you can see the wiper and you can actually trace it right to the coil that you suspect and that one would be right there so if you put a meter from ground to that input you would hope to see the low resistance right so there I am Guess what? She's open. So we better take a look inside of that coil. All right, so let's take a look at a normal RF input coil. So we're going inside of the coil right now. You see that little wire coming from the center up to this terminal? That is normal. Now let's take a look at an abnormal coil. Same deal. Got that wire coming out of the center. See the solder glob on it? See these other solder globs? This one was damaged long ago and somebody attempted to repair it. Alright, so as you could see from my inspection scope, somebody did try to repair this at one time. So hopefully I can go in there and lay a little wire runner and attach to that solder glob that they tried to do. I've done this before and had great success, so wish me luck. All right, so here's the fix, if you can see it. Here's the wire that I laid in there. I had taken an X-Acto knife and scraped that little enamel coated wire and put a little bit of flux on there and bam, she soldered up. So let's re-measure those antenna input coils. See if I got lucky. All right, so that was quite the task. 
probably the most difficult one I've had to do. <clears throat> I actually had to do that like three times. I took a little X-Acto knife, I laid that little enamel coated wire on top of my new wire, and I had to scrape it using a magnifying glass. It was a job, guys. So here we are on, I think, uh, A. There we are. B. C. Remember, C was dead. E, so on and so forth. So I now have a good RF input on band C. It's time to fire this thing up, and see if we've made any improvement. All right, same deal. We're just gonna check each band. I do not have the RF generator connected directly. The lead's just kind of laying back there, inducing in the frequency. I'm on the 80 meter band. So we're somewhere between 3.4 and 3.6 megahertz. There she is. Lots of sensitivity. Good deal. Let's go up to about 10 megahertz now. Oh, there she is. Same deal. Now remember, band C is the one that I just repaired that coil on. So we've got all kinds of gain. It's a good sign. All right, let's go up another band. Now we're going to be up around maybe 26 megahertz or so. There she was. I went right by it. We use a fine tuning here. Looking good now for that six meter band that was dead before. So you got to go all the way down here to six. Take her frequency, say 52 megahertz. See if we can find it. Nope. So it appears as though six meters still dead. I'll have to work on that. But the good thing is we have a lot more sensitivity than we did before. So the resistors and that open coil made a huge difference. All right, so you can see working on these vintage receivers is quite the task because you don't know what's coming at you. These things have been around for 60 years at least. Okay, so they have problems and other people have had their little fingers in there doing things and you're going to have to discover that on the way. I've been working on this thing most of the day, so I'm going to have to call it quits for part two. Part three will pick up with checking RF alignment and hopefully fixing that six meter band. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. Terry here, D-Lab.